Mike, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Larry. And can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. And first, I must apologize for this to everyone. I'm a primary caregiver for an 81-year-old who refuses to get vaccinated. Don't get me started. <laughs> so, and I live in Florida, which is leading the nation in new cases of COVID. So my apologies for the mask. Um, I'm not trying to mask my identity in any way. That's me right there. Definitely not the prettiest of pictures. Uh, I got a face made for radio. So bottom line, Larry asked me to basically cover why in the heck uh, do we need to change the Democratic Party here? So Number one reason, because, and I'm sure we're going to be discussing this more today, because this is unfortunately, at least for federal elections, very much a two-party system. It's unfortunate. Uh, bottom line, Progressive Democrats of America is all for other parties getting started. However, it's how it happens that's the challenge. Uh, I would submit that running a presidential candidate uh, once every four years and pulling in 2% of the vote does more to damage the movement than it does to help it. Because that just gives the other side fodder for um, suggesting that our issues do not resonate with the electorate. And bottom line, that is just not the case. So we at Progressive Democrats of America has al have always advocated, please do run an independent, run a green, run a, uh, a democratic socialist. We work with the greens and DSA all the time. Run them locally for city council, for county commission, for even state house bottom line, but when we're talking especially about federal elections and especially about getting the kind of news coverage required for our issues to go somewhere, it's the Democratic Party. Um, uh, one of the reasons why in 2013 we started the Run Bernie Run movement was that Bernie was going to be spending so much of his time just trying to get on the ballot in states across the country. It, we have found that, unfortunately, if a third party at the federal level starts gaining any traction, then unless we change the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party will collude with the Republican Party to make sure that that progressive has real problems getting onto the ballot, etc. So uh, we are definitely all about inside outside strategy. You got to get inside to change some of these things that can conceivably make it easier for some third parties to come along. We at PDA are not afraid of any other party. We're real confident that our agenda, the agenda of the folks on this call, wins the day. Bottom line, I don't care what letter is next to it. So we welcome, we welcome the ongoing di uh, dialectic in that regard. So, bottom line, unfortunately, it's a two-party system. Um, I, by no stretch of the imagination, bleed blue. But I was told back 15 years ago by a local Democratic Party official that, Mike, if you want to make some real change, get into the, get into the party and change it. So that's what I've done. And I've taken the approach and we at PDA take the approach that we always have to remember the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So bottom line, I'm all about making sure that we defeat fascists. So number one, let's defeat fascists. Number two, let's get neo-fascists and downright fascists out of the Democratic Party. How do we do that? By being active in the Democratic Party. 
Second reason why we absolutely have to do this is because this country desperately needs a real progressive party as the right-wing fascists continue to plant their flag further and further to the right in regards to what is supposedly legitimate policy. And so we have to combat that. Uh, it's amazing to me that, you know, back in the 70s, Karl Rove was involved in indictable stuff as the head of the young Republicans during the, the Nixon years. Uh, yet somehow he got to the mainstream. Then Roger Stone, a guy who was a joke in Washington, you know, with a tattoo of Nixon on his back, for God's sake, suddenly becomes mainstream. So we must combat that kind of movement. And what we desperately need is obviously a Eugene V. Debs of some sort, but wouldn't it be great if we just had the guy who spoke these words at the Democratic Convention in 1936? And I'll try to do a reasonable accent. We have to struggle with the old enemies of peace that being business and financial monopoly, speculation, reckless banking, class antagonism, sectionalism, and war profiteering. They had begun to consider the government of the United States as a mere appendage to their own affairs. And we now know that government by organized money is just as dangerous as government by organized mob. Big cheers, big cheers, about a minute worth of standing ovation. He followed with, never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. Bigger applause, ceiling busting etc. And he closes with, I should like to have it said of my first administration that the forces of selfishness and lust for power met their match. I should like to have it said of my second administration that in it these three, excuse me, that in it these forces met their master. Big applause. Now, this was the head of the Democratic Party at one point, gang. This was established. We aren't asking for something that's wacky revolutionary here by any stretch. We just need people who will speak that kind of truth to power and also act on it. Wouldn't it be great if Chuck Schumer said something like that. Now we know that's not going to happen. But it's in our DNA. It's in our history. So the third reason why we want to do this is it's doable. It's doable. Top Democratic leaders used to at least talk this way. This was the kind of vision used for the mainstream. By the way, it made Roosevelt the only president to be elected four times. If they hadn't changed the Constitution on him, he could have been elected king. So bottom line, this wins elections. We've seen it in the past. It's replicatable today, replicatable today, okay? And this is also very doable in that while the rules of the Democratic Party can seem like really complex plumbing sometimes, really it just comes down to this simple fact. And that is you just got to run for precinct committee person.
if every single Bernie supporter, every single hard left person out there made the commitment to do one of two things, either run for precinct committee person and run a real campaign and win or find someone who holds our values who will do that. It's that simple. Now, there's a lot of other pieces of very specific information that we'll dive into here throughout the day. But at the end of the day, it's this simple. Just show up. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. That was as awesome as we expected. (laughs) 